Molo Sanbonani, hello, how's it? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Morning prayers are out of the way, which means it's time for Vuganazo here on the Big Daddy Liberty Show. My name is Sikhle Ngobese, aka Big Daddy Liberty. Happy Thursday, good people. Just a good reminder, we help you begin your news day with solid analysis that you will get nowhere else. But our friends over at the Daily Friend, you'll find at dailyfriend.co.za, well, they'll help you wrap up your news day as they come to you Monday to Thursdays at 1.30 p.m. Check them out live. With that being said, you'll also find us here at Vuganazo on our website at uh, BigDaddyLiberty.com. There, of course, you can also pledge some support. Guys, I encourage you to join the growing number of um, people who are putting aside 100 Rand and donating it to us to help us effectively build this alternative media space. 100 Rand a month is all that we're asking for, and you can find those details, of course, at our website. Now, with that being said, enough with the jibber-jabber. How about we get straight into the news? All right, guys, we begin in Johannesburg once again, south of Johannesburg in Fine Town, that township, of course, in that part of the world. You'll remember on Tuesday we covered a story, a harrowing story, where at the time it was thought that seven people had been murdered, gunned down by gunmen who initially, after trying to rob street vendors who were selling chicken feet and other grilled meats on the street, after trying to rob them, uh, and, that, and those people resisting those criminals, they then came back and proceeded to gun down, shoot uh, down people in that part of the world, uh, innocent people, the street vendors, the, as I mentioned, you know, the, the salt of the earth type South Africans, law abiding, people who are just trying to make ends meet, gunned down by criminals who feel entitled to not only our property, but also our lives. That story really did break my heart, it, just the, the loss of life in it all. I want to do a bit of feedback here because as I mentioned in that episode, you know, politicians being the attention media horse that they are, I warned you would descend on that scene, led of course by the asshat of a police minister, Upegi Tele, who will never miss an opportunity to get his pound of flesh of attention from the media. Here's a minister who does very little indeed out-argue nothing realistically to end the crime waves in this country at a systemic level, where the sort of political leadership required to lead the police service in this country into becoming a 21st century efficient, visible, and effective policing force. He does not have that capacity or even that ability, which filters down, therefore, to the management structure of the police, which is just as inept, incompetent, and downright corrupt in some cases. It is those two layers, levels, which are failing our ordinary men in blue on the street. It simply makes their job untenable, difficult, and almost impossible. And you see it in moments like this. But again, let me unpack this, because as I said, these politicians will and would descend on um, the scene in order, with journalists, of course, to get their fair... Um, pound of flesh of attention. And as always, Begitele rocks up to these places, makes all sorts of announcements which don't deal with the crime systemically, but are a mere band-aid. Let me read from you for you in News 24 exactly what band-aid and promises he's made to this particular community as he has with others in the past. Uh, he's quoted as having said, we are coming back here unannounced. We are not going to allow gallivanting people to kill innocent residents. Some of you know the culprits. Some of you are defending the suspects. We need to figure out what time of what type of people rob and shoot people trying to earn a living. Ellis said, gosh, he needs to figure that out. He goes on to say, he reiterated his promise to, de uh, to deploy the tactical response team, the TRT, or also known as Amaperete, in the area, quoted as having said, they, the TRT, are going to clean you and this place until it is right. Zeke, you're not going to call me to fetch Amaperete from here. I can't say when and how many will be deployed here. They will be allowed to do their work. They will flush out criminals from this place. By Monday, another promise, by Monday, the, the mobile police station you've asked uh, for will be here. There will be SEPs and JMPD officers stationed at the mobile police station. Tele promised. Again, I want to repeat what I've said before. 
he comes to these places where disaster has struck. That's become his job now. He's become the Minister of Commiseration. He'll go to places all over this country where incidents like these have happened, make these wild promises which are merely a band-aid. This does not solve the overall crime picture in any community in this country and is simply a knee-jerk response from a politician who knows he is failing you, from a politician who knows he is failing you. The same sober, moral, prudent, law-abiding citizen who's desperate for safety and security in this country. Don't take it from me. Here's a story from one of the uh, mothers of the victims of the people who are gunned down here. These are the people who Upe Hitele is failing. Listen to how this woman tells the story of what reality is like in this country, how criminals have more freedom than we do. One of them was Ikona Twabe, who was sitting in a car with friends. Her mother, Ntomzanele Twabe, said they continue to live in fear. It's too much. It's too much crime. It's too much. As a result, no Ronali District Committee here, ba ba the patrollers, ba kona ori eh, ba patrolle, ba patrolle, ba check or it's along crime. Ah, ah, ah. I want freedom. I want to feel like the limit here is not six any minute. I'm by many time. I'm by phone book. I'm best can't get back to telephone. I'm so tired. I'm by phone book. I'm getting nothing. I'm so getting. Yep. You can see the pain in that whole story and you can listen, you can hear rather, how this woman would rather speak about what they as a community, the street committee she mentions, are trying to do to ensure their own safety. There is no sense of even placing police and the state, if you will, as being at the forefront of uh, beating criminality in that area. South Africans are living in fear. And I'll say this in conclusion, if you still think Ubeitele or the police in this instance, who, again, I must separate issues, are failed, our ordinary men in blue, are failed by their leadership, both by way of management and the political leader, as had Ubeitele failed by them, if you believe though that they are going to save you from criminals, then you are mistaken. Oh, now I take you sadly to the north of KwaZulu Natal, the community of Dumbe, where, get this, school children allegedly who, after being told that their metric dance was being postponed, presumably because it's exam time now, then proceeded in a fit of anger to burn the school down. Oi, fail. This behavior I've spoken about before, where if one grouping or another is unhappy about something, they proceed to just burn and destroy things is absolutely toxic. And unfortunately, it is behavior that we've inherited from our politicians, believe it or not, during the, quote, struggle days, when such campaigns of, quote, rendering things ungovernable and destroying state and public infrastructure was seen as a way of resisting the apartheid government. Sadly, when we then transitioned into a democracy, that behavior wasn't nipped in the bud. We see it play out, for example, in protests and even uh, service delivery strikes, as is often called, or even workplace strikes, where often groupings embark on a wanton destruction of public property. Here's the thing, that same behavior becomes a learned behavior in children, as you've now seen in this particular case of the Ganye Ganye school in Dumbe. I want to quickly read from the Independent, which gave a bit more uh, context of the story. The story itself, I think, was broken by the NFP as a party. They brought it to the fore. Um, and I must say this, this incident is yet to be confirmed by the police. But in any event, the write-up goes as follows. Now, Ganye Ganye High School, which the party, that's the NFP, the National Freedom Party, which brought this up, is described as one of the best schools in the Zulu land district, was set alight, apparently by angry pupils, after school management had told them that the matric dance had been postponed now, according to the party, this sparked anger and protest amongst the pupils. The incident came before the metric pupils sit for the exams starting on Monday. Now, just a final quote here from the officials. Of course, I'm talking about the uh, uh, education department. The incident was condemned by both Education Deputy Minister Dr. Rechna uh, Mhaule 
and KZN Education MEC Umbali Fraser during their monitoring of the examination start in and around Durban on Monday. Now the whole thing again, as I said, is just it rings of a political culture in this country which is absolutely toxic and destructive, where angry people, disaffected people feel as though, well, if I'm happy, you should be unhappy, and they burn stuff forgetting that this is infrastructure, social and public infrastructure, that they will need again. That behavior, that culture, we seriously need to nip in the bud if we're going to build a nation or indeed grow this economy. All right, that's it from me today. A nice short and, or relatively short and sweet one for this, the Thursday edition of Vuganazo. Let me know what you think of the stories as always. You can do that by finding us on our website at bigdaddyliberty.com. You see, I did learn uh, from the feedback I got. Don't say the www part. Well, I'm no longer saying it. With that being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow on Friday. Remember, we come to you weekdays from 7 a.m. Uh, and you can find us on Facebook and on YouTube. That's the show, of course, broadcast on those two uh, mediums. And of course, if you are watching on YouTube, do me a solid favor. Um, hit that subscribe button and of course the bell notification so that every weekday from 7am you're notified when Fuganazo is on your screens. Happy Thursday!